unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it means I can't move around, and I have a tendency to do that as well. <clears throat> okay, well, um, I think I'll kick off now. Thanks very much for making the time to join us. Uh, my name's Ted Kofi. I'm a broadcast journalist. Um, the early part of my life was actually in brand marketing. I was a market analyst for Johnson's Wax. Then I moved into, um, into the media, uh, publishing newspapers. Um, broadcast journalism, that would have been the BBC World Service, Radio 5, LBC. I used to present the, col uh, the colourful morning, uh, the colourful radio morning show. So what I'm saying is that I have a sense of the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to evaluating what good PR looks and feels like. My company is JournoLink. We're a business solution for SMEs who need to punch above their weight and gain the kind of visibility uh, that larger, much larger companies generally garner using terrestrial PR agencies with huge fees. But our slogan is that we do it with simple, affordable PR, the kind of PR that is within the budget constraints of a micro business or a startup. Now, first thing I should say is that when people say SMEs, in actual fact, 95% of SMEs are micro businesses. Because micro businesses are businesses that employ naught to nine people. And in actual fact, again, these are the people who are leading the charge for Britain's economic recovery. If you're from a company that employs naught to nine people, you're the very diamond that Britain is looking to mine right now. And for you, PR, raising your profile, getting your message across, is absolutely crucial. So, we're going to talk about the DNA of PR. I'm going to talk for about 20, 25 minutes, and if you want to have, you know, ask any questions afterwards, please do. There's one word I want you to take away with you, if you can. That word is relationships. When people talk about PR, they think a lot about the actions that they're going to take. But actually, whether you call it PR, whether you call it media relations, the word that keeps recurring is that of relationships. And there are three key relationships that we need to be paying attention to. The first important relationship is the relationship of your activity, your business, your ideas with the big one, news. What I'm saying is that nothing happens in a vacuum. You don't date everybody, you have a selected kind of goal of the sort of person that you need to have a relationship with and that's where you go. But you don't live in a bubble and create a relationship. So the first big relationship you need to create for yourself is your relationship with the wider news agenda. The second thing is your relationship to the gateway to that news agenda. And the gateway is either through people like me who work in the media or the media itself. So the second thing about PR is your relationship to real journalists in the media. And when you talk about the Daily Telegraph, actually the Daily Telegraph as an entity is just a brand. The reality of the brand is that it's manufactured and created by the reporters, the opinion writers, the sub-editors, the editor, in short, the journalists that produce that medium. Third relationship we need to be thinking about, of course, is your relationship to your clients, the market, and the wider public. Now, in the old days, when I was younger, PR was much more static. All you needed to do 
was to get to the gateway, which was the journalist, and between you and the journalist, you could create your message and pretty well make sure that it went out the way you wanted, to, wanted it to go. Everything has changed. And what has caused the big change is the emerging technology, which is digital technology. And I would say that the most important way this has affected the relationships would have to be the fact that audiences, clients, markets are all highly democratized. Everybody has a point of view. Not only do they have a point of view, they can also express this point of view in the way in which they've never expressed it before. And this creates a few wrinkles in some of the relationships that you're talking about. But we'll look at that in a moment. Am I making sense? We're together. Let's take a quick look at your relationship to the news. I was talking to Own Up. <laughs> She's got a fabulous business in, um, in film, actually. It's fantastic ideas she's got this morning. And I was saying that when you're talking about your relationship to news, consider the whole news agenda like, uh, like an ocean. From a distance, viewed from space, the ocean just looks like a massive wadge of water. But drop a ship on the ocean without any power, and within a month or so, it would have traveled miles. That's because there's a current that's running. The news agenda is like a huge current. And there is no way you can navigate this news agenda without being aware of what the current is. Moreover, of course, your business, your messages, your news is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, you know that and I know that. But sadly, the rest of the world doesn't know that. So the way you elevate your point of view, your message, your communication is by what we call hooking it onto the news agenda. So the first relationship in news is for you to create a relationship with the news agenda. And you do that by finding the appropriate hooks. Okay? Can anyone think of a big piece of news that came out this morning that's going to affect how the high street is going to perform vis-a-vis -vis women who are 40-something years old? Can it, has anybody heard anything? Is anybody here in fashion or retail? Okay. Every fashion and retail person will be talking about the INS report this morning which came out and said that 67% of women in their late 40s and above feel invisible on the high street. Problem is, they burn seven billion, that's with a B for Bertie, seven billion pounds of retail spend per annum. You can't avoid that. So occasionally, something comes along that actually sets the news agenda and makes the current flow a particular way. Yesterday, in the field of cosmetology, um, a Canadian, a hitherto unknown, tiny Canadian company um, made a contract with the family of Bob Marley. And what was Bob Marley famous for apart from reggae music? The other thing. They've launched a line of cannabis-based cosmetic products. Apparently it's got one of, the, one of the effects of it is that it's very good for your skin from absolutely nowhere nowhere this company's stock has gone ballistic okay now that is something where they have suddenly created the news agenda it jars with lots of things it's legal the product it's got all kinds of social negative hooks but in this context it's huge and it's massive news now occasionally things like these two events will happen but in 99.9 .9 recurring uh, percent of the time, you won't be creating the news agenda. You're going to have to find a hook that follows the flow. So j just following this image again of, of the sea and the wave, on the top of the sea, you have lots of eddies, whirlpools, wavelets, and so on. And that's me and you, our individual businesses, on this huge sea of the news agenda. 
The problem is there are thousands of us. Your problem is to find the way that makes your wavelet, your wave crest, your whirlpool, your eddy distinctive. And you do that by finding angles that work. So, bottom line in this is you become visible by virtue of your relationship to news. So if you're thinking about PR, the first thought you've got to have is you've got to find a way of finding out, establishing precisely what your relationship is to the prevailing news agenda. And that's about finding hooks, and that's about finding angles. Please think really laterally on that. Next, your relationship to journalists. In 2006, there were three million blogs. Eight years later, or seven years later, in 2013, there are now 152 million blogs. This has had three impacts. It's meant that news is hyper-localized. Every single interest group has got several hundred blogs that cater to it. That's great for an SME. That's great for an individual who needs to get their news agenda out there. Secondly, it means that a lot of the news that's being carried is being carried in real or near real time. What I'm saying here now may well be tweeted by somebody somewhere and it's immediate. If what I was saying was earth, was earth shattering, okay, I would have made an impact on the news. You've got to think along about news in this way. So media itself is diverse. Secondly, as a person who wants to create a relationship with media, I was saying to, to, to my friend, was it Jean? This morning, that when you're creating a relationship, you don't just want, if you're a woman, you don't just want any man. If you're a man, you don't just want any woman. You've got to know what's of interest to you. And actually, if you go out trying to create a relationship with everybody, you wind up creating a relationship with nobody. So you need to know the sector you're interested in, the style, the content, the tone of voice of the kind of media and the kind of journalists that you're connecting with. It's also useful to create a relationship with them knowing what they're interested in. I was saying this morning that if you want to get to know about me, if I'm, forgive me, I can't believe this has happened. <laughs> Sorry. That'll no doubt be captured and tweeted somewhere. <laughs> but it illustrates my point perfectly. Now, um, where were we? Yeah, building a relationship with, with, with journalists. Um, if you connect with a journalist, if you connect with an individual, and that, that, that person is the sort of person who likes to go to museums, it's wholly inappropriate to take them to a McDonald's. If the sort of um, interest a person has is found at an um, Isabella Blow exhibition on exotic hats, don't take them to the Science Museum. What I'm saying is that you need to find the tone of voice and the means of connecting which is appropriate for the sector of media or interest that you're interested in. And I found that a lot of people, when they talk about PR, talk about PR as if the audience was an amorphous mass. Well, the numbers are there. There are 152 million blogs. That means you can really narrow cast your message to exactly the person or the, exactly the media that you want in your crosshairs. So, 
The last thing I'll mention in relationships with, with, uh, with media, and I've got a couple of inf infographics in a couple of minutes to show you what I mean, is that I think five years ago, when I was producing news, I would, if I'm honest, I used to check everything a lot more thoroughly. And I, I normally go twice, um, verify the data with one source, and then verify my verification from a third source. Journalists don't do that so much. And that's because a lot of the news they create is what's called co-created. I'll give you an example of how this trend came about. Does anybody remember Encarta? Encarta, do you remember Encarta? Okay. Encarta was this beautifully resourced, slick, well-oiled, immaculately researched encyclopedia resource. It was so good, it killed Encyclopedia Britannica. Then up rocks Wikipedia. Crowdsourced information. We don't know who is writing on Wikipedia. It's as cheap as chips, but it's got the added bonus of, uh, of, of um, garnering information from an incredibly wide base. And there is something about, you know, the law of inertia of big numbers is that the bigger your, your sample size, the more accurate your readings become. Well, within eight years, Encarta had been pretty much folded up by a crowdsourced um, news source. So this just goes to show the emerging trend that when a news agenda is being set in a newsroom, actually, um, you go first to the social media feeds, what's trending on Twitter, on this subject, and so on and so forth, and you have access to exactly the same resource. So often, PR and your relationship with journalists is about interjecting your message into the flow of the conversation that's going on at the moment and leveraging that to your benefit. So, again, this relationship with media, with social media, with other journalists is very important. One, one last thing I'll, I'll say. Don't think I'm shallow. But when I write or broadcast, I like to know that I found traction. As a journalist, if I know you're reading my work, it gives me satisfaction. The first trick in creating a relationship with media is for you to start looking at their work. It's what they're paid for. It's the way they judge themselves. So this is very important because a relationship isn't created in a value. It's created through little acts of significance of that nature. Clients and social media. Of course, social media is the biggest gateway to our publics, both client and market. Um, the best way I can advise when it comes to creating a relationship with your clients, your marketplace and the public, imagine, think of yourself as a media mogul and you own lots of media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, in, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, LinkedIn. Imagine that you're the owner of all of these platforms and you're the editor of the content that goes on all of them. What are you going to put on there? Refer back to your hooks and your angles. But here's the thing. You don't have to be Rupert Murdoch. You actually own all this media. It's yours. And when you're doing it, think as an editor. Not so much about what's of interest to you, but what fits a news agenda, your hook, and what is an interesting, it's, uh, interesting is normally relevant but unexpected angle on the news that you're putting out. So a few things come out. I mean, we help our clients at JournoLink write press releases. And I'm always curious to find out, so what is your big idea? What is your news? What hooks and angles are you going to be presenting? I'll give you, I'll give you a quick example. When we were setting up JournoLink, we needed, I needed an image, an, an idea 
that I could quickly present to people as to what this business does. And I thought to myself, in discussion with my colleagues, we thought, well, it's actually it's a little bit like a dating site where businesses who are looking for publicity meet journalists who are looking for content. And it's the journalists who are going to be all picky and choosy. And it's the clients who need to dress up a little bit and present themselves in their best possible light. Very much in the manner of a dating type outfit. Now, what I've discovered is that this idea, which you've got to be careful, obviously, the environment in which it's presented, but it's something that's, that it's, it's an image that's locked in people's minds. It's quite graphic. It gives you a sense of what the business is about. So what is your big idea? What is your thing that's going to leave an impression in your clients' minds? We need to work, you need to work this out. So, and as I mentioned before, when you're relating with your clients, is it a Starbucks type relationship? Is it a recherche French bistro type relationship? Is it a science, science museum type relationship? Or is it an Isabella Blow kind of refined, high production value, arty type relationship? It's something that you have to work out for yourself. I'll just end now with a few emerging impacts of social media on how PR has worked. Can you read this? Journalists use social media. 50% of, of journalists use social media um, as the main source of information. Um, consumer opinion for most journalists is a more reliable is far more reliable than the statement of any organization. Seventy percent of journalists act differently on social media than in traditional media, where the barriers of proof and so on are much higher. Forget the last point about the Dutch, but actually, and this one I found interesting, journalists, there's a lot less fact-checking, 44% 44 crowd-checked, 55% crowd-checked, and that's an emerging trend and that's going to continue. Thirty-two percent of journalists found points on social media to be unreliable. However, 51 percent of PR professionals believe the reliability of news decreases due to social media because there is less fact-checking. If journalists believe that 32 percent of what comes out on social media is reliable, why would half of them still use it as their main source of information? I just brought these, these facts up for you, to, for you know, to try and demonstrate how important it is for you to have an interaction with, with the news agenda. And don't even think about connecting with your clients, with your publics, with your market, without first establishing a really strong relationship with the news agenda and I think that's it does anybody does anybody have anything to say or questions or suggestions so where further down the aisle at Cherno link anybody who wants further discussion about how we can help you with PR is welcome to come to our stand and um, Asena has got some leaflets here to pass out to everybody who's here. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us.